Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another video, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how you can get Melon DS set up and running to emulate the DS or the DSi on your computer. So, first thing you're going to want to do is download this Melon DS and the DS BIOS archive. And then we are going to right click and extract both of them. So we're going to extract Melon DS first and then DS BIOS. Now to extract the Melon DS file, you will need a WinRAR or 7-zip. I'm using WinRAR here, but it doesn't matter what you use. Now that we have both these files, we're going to want to delete the originals because we won't need them anymore. And we have to move Melon DS to a permanent folder. So I'm going to put this on the desktop, although you'd probably put it somewhere like your documents folder. And I'm going to call this Melon DS. Now we're going to take Melon DS and move it into the folder. We're also going to take the BIOS and move into that folder. Now I'm going to close out my downloads folder, open up this folder, and now we have the two files in it. So what we're going to want to do first is open up Melon DS, and we get this window, which will be our emulator. First thing we're going to do is come to config, and there's a bunch of settings here, but not too many of them we'll have to worry about, at least not right now. So first thing we're going to do is open up the MU settings. And right here, we're going to choose whether we want to emulate a DS or a DSi. Now, if you're going to be running the home menu, this is where it would matter. But otherwise, it doesn't really matter, you know, for the kind of gameplay you're going to get. So I'm going to set it to DSi because I do want to emulate the DSi home menu. But again, it's experimental. So if you're experiencing anything weird, you might want to set it back to DS. I'm also going to uncheck boot game directly because if you check that, it will skip the home menu. And I do want to see the home menu. Now we're going to need to fill out this DS mode tab. So at the top, we have the ARM9 BIOS. We're just going to browse, go into the DS BIOS, and select NDS BIOS 9. Then for 7, BIOS 7. And for firmware, you guessed it, NDS firmware. Next, we're going to go to DSi mode. You'll need to fill this out if you're using DSi. And we are going to do DSi BIOS 9, DSi BIOS 7, DSi firmware, and lastly, our DSi NAND. Next, we're going to go to CPU emulation. Now, I'm going to tick this enable JIT recompiler because, in my experience, it's faster and we can leave everything else as it is. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to configure our hotkeys. So, come to configure, input, and hotkeys. And over here, we're going to be able to configure our keyboard. And over here, we're going to be able to configure a joystick. So, I'm going to turn on my controller that I have over here. And I'm going to start pressing buttons. So, we have A, B, X, Y, left, right, up, down, L, R, select, and start. Now, if your controller isn't working, just make sure you have the correct controller selected under joystick down here. And you can also map all the things for the keyboard, but I'm going to leave those for now. We can also go to general hotkeys, and all of these hotkeys are things that might be interesting and useful during the emulator. So we can pause the game and just freeze it in place, reset the game as if you were to turn it off and on again. Fast forward, disable the FPS limit, which is just fast forward kind of but toggling. Close and open the lid, as if you were to shut the DS. And microphone will simulate a bit of noise into the microphone. Now when we're done, we can just press OK. And let's move on to the video settings. So configure video settings. Now this is pretty simple. Uh, for the 3D renderer, we're going to set it to OpenGL. This uses your graphics card rather than your CPU. And if you have a fairly good graphics card, that'd be nice. I find OpenGL is always preferable, though, over software. Uh, you can let me know in the comments if there's a case where that's not true. But I'm definitely going to use OpenGL. And then we can change the resolution. So if we want to bump the resolution up to something nicer, just be aware this will cause lag. But we can definitely bump the resolution up. I'm just going to keep it at native here. And then we're going to press OK. And one more setting we have to go through is audio settings. We can just change the volume. And we can also change we can also change the microphone input. So we can have this external microphone play through your microphone. Or this can just be noise forever. And then WAV file, you can open up a .WAV file. It'll just play that file through the microphone. But I'm just going to set it to my microphone and press OK. And with that... We are ready to start emulating games. So we can do file and we can boot the firmware just to load up the menu. 
In this case, it's going to load up the DSi menu for me, or at least the uh, setup screen. And I'm going to maximize this window, but we can also mess around with a couple other settings. But just give me a second, I'm going to set up this console first. Alrighty, so here we are in the main screen, and now what we're gonna, we can do is configure the way that the screens are shown. So let's go up to configure, and we can change the screen size right here. So this is four times the size of a DS, and then we can have one times the size, so this is just the normal size of a DS. But I'm just going to full screen it, so it takes up my entire screen. We can also rotate the screens. Uh, I honestly have no idea why you would want to do this, but uh, it's an option, I guess. Next, the screen gap. You're going to add a gap in the screen. I'm pretty sure 64 pixels is the normal one for a DS, but I'm not entirely sure. But I'm going to turn the gap off once again. And also for the layout, we can have horizontal or vertical as our layout. I'm going to keep it on vertical. And we can also have screen sizing. Now, this is really interesting. You can either make the top screen bigger like so make the bottom screen bigger like so, or you can set it to auto. And what that'll basically do, it'll emphasize the screen that's showing the main thing. So if we, I were to open a game, for example, for example, New Super Mario Bros, where all the gameplay is on the top screen, the top screen would become bigger. But if I were to open, say, Animal Crossing Wild World, where all the gameplay happens on the bottom screen, the bottom screen would be big like this. But once again, I'm just gonna keep that on even because I don't like that that much. We can also turn off and on screen filtering, and you'll see if you pay close attention, when we turn it off, it becomes more pixely, and when we turn it on, it becomes more blurry. So it's up to you what you want. I like keeping it off as well. But anyways, we're basically done here. The only thing we have left is to load our ROMs. So we can do File, Open ROM, and then we can navigate to our ROMs. So here I have a few ROMs. <laughs> yes, I do have that McDonald's game. But for example, let's pick New Super Mario Bros, and we can just hit Open. And it's going to reset right here. And here's New Super Mario Bros. And we can just start it right on up. And here we are playing New Super Mario Bros. on our computer. Now, if this tutorial helps you, remember to leave a big fat thumbs up. Maybe even subscribe if one of my tutorials has helped you before or if you really enjoyed it and want to see more. Thank you guys for watching. And I will see you guys later. Goodbye.